Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Well, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to 1 John, 1 John chapter 3. How many believe God can change your life in the next few minutes? You know, somebody said, oh, that's pastor, that's just, uh, you know, a preacher thing. You just try to get people, you know, whatever. No, it's true. I've been in one service multiple times in my life, one message that absolutely revolutionized my life. Amen. And I've learned over the years to position myself and whatever, posture myself to be in a, a place of expectation to receive. Amen. Because you may be looking up at me this morning uh, or listening to my voice, but w what we need to strive to hear is we need to hear the Lord this morning. How many can hear from the Lord? If he's going to do something for you, it's going to be big and it's going to be powerful. Are we in agreement? All right. First John chapter three, uh, verse two, this verse has been one of my life verses. Um, I stand on it. I go back to it multiple times, uh, throughout a year, uh, really kind of, it speaks to me about vision and here's what the verse says. Everybody say, I'm listening. It says, uh, beloved, this is the, in the King James version, actually. It says, beloved, now we are the sons of God. Amen. Glory to God. Now we are the sons of God. Now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. I want you to pay attention to those words right there. It does not yet appear what we shall be. Amen. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that... Uh, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I want you to look again at those words. Uh, we are obviously sons of God, daughters of God, but it, it does not yet appear what we shall be. Amen. It does not yet appear what we shall be. Or let me say it to you a couple different ways. It, it, uh, it does not yet appear what we shall be, or we could say it this way, there's no telling. We, you and I cannot see what we can become as we move forward in the things of God. It does not yet appear. It is not uh, obvious to us what we can become as we continue to follow the Lord. Is anyone here? Amen. Meaning this, you and I can change. Amen we can evolve and become something that we are currently not at this moment. Is anybody here? Amen. Has anybody ever heard that verse? Uh, uh, we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. Amen. Uh, I love the song, the lyrics of the Eric Champion song. Uh, he said, I'm an ever-changing, uh, rearranging life form. Uh, well, I'm a spirit being. Everybody say, I'm a spirit being. Amen. And now, now to the unrenewed mind, that may sound like some crazy stuff. I'm a spirit being. No, you are a spirit being. Amen. And the life of God is dwelling in you. Amen. You, you, as we continue to grow in God, which is what we're going to talk about, as we continue to grow in God, you and I can become uh, something that it, it, we, we cannot see at this moment. Is anybody here? Well, let me give you a practical example. Uh, I was uh, 19 years old before I uh, uh, made Jesus the Lord of my life. Amen. I was working for my brother who had a, a, a plumbing business here. Uh, just, uh, I loved doing that. Uh, I loved working for him. I, I didn't really have much direction or vision for my life. Amen. But then what happened? Well, I gave my life to the Lord. And then all of a sudden, within just days and really hours of being uh, 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 born again, all of a sudden, something started stirring in me. Amen. Something started stirring in me. And, and I look back on it now and I say it was vision. Amen. Somebody say vision. Ah, somebody say vision. Amen. So, so what happened? So I started uh, 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 seeing some things that I could step into. I was telling my kids, uh, well, actually ministering in youth service uh, about a month ago. And, and, and I said that in the first, I believe, six months to a year of, of giving my life to the Lord, I had opportunities to go to England and Scotland, uh, Haiti, and then later, you know, uh, uh, went to uh, uh, Mexico and Cuba and, and different places. I've since been to Dubai and different places all, all over. 
Amen. What was that? That was God opening up doors for me to step into. Now, 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 follow me here. Here's my point. When I was 19 and working for my brother, I didn't see that. I, I didn't see that. Is anybody here? I, I, I didn't see uh, you know, then when I was, uh, you know, not, not really doing a lot, uh, uh, financially, uh, you know, just basically a, a worker at a, at a business, uh, not, I, I didn't see the things that God had for me. I, I never, you know, I went to Bible college, uh, uh, just going just because I love the Lord. I had no idea that I had a call on my life to be in ministry. Had no idea. Is anybody here? And, and I'm not saying it to make it about me. I'm saying it so that you can see. It does not yet appear to you what you can be. Now, this is a, a tricky question here. But how many of y'all would just like to stay the same for the remainder of your life? Now, now most, a lot of people, believe it or not, they're very much content with, with who they are and where they are. But if you really ask your spouse, they might would give you a, a thumbs up on the going ahead and changing plan. Anybody? Just look straight ahead, wives. I'm going to help you if I can. Now, the, the title of this message this morning is Grace for Growth. Amen? Grace for Growth. Put the verse up there one more time. It does not yet appear what we shall be amen it does not yet appear meaning we can't see right now what we can become in god i know what the verse says i know what it means in its context but there's a principle in it it is not yet revealed to you and i what we can be in god meaning we can grow into something we can step into something that we're currently not is anybody here you could step into some things in areas of your life that you're currently not operating in amen you know you could become a better husband you could become a better wife you could become a better leader you could become a better christian you could become a, a, a stronger in what it is that you believe you can become uh, something that you're not. Amen. And how many know that, that the, it, it, the essence of that is, is this principle of growth and change. Come on, everybody say it with me this morning. Say, I'm changing. Amen. My God, some of y'all, we, we need to get a hold of that. We, we need to change. Amen. Be open to God leading us. All right, let's look at another verse here. Romans chapter 12. I'm going to tell you right now, you're already making me work harder than I want to this morning. Okay. So now we're, gonna, we're not even going to beat the Pentecostals to the Dixie Grill today. I got news for you. Ha, ha, ha. Let's look at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Now this may be a familiar verse to some of us, but it doesn't mean that you, you or I know it like we should know it or could know it. Amen. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. I guess this is my King James day today because I'm going to do the King James version again here. It says this, and be not conformed to what? This world. Be not conformed to this world. How are we doing on that? How are we doing on that part? On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being uh, good, 1 being not so good, where do you rate yourself on be not conformed to this world? Well, uh, all, all of us, were probably all st starting around a five, so we got work to do no matter where you think you are, right? Do not be conformed to this world, but what? Be ye what? Transformed. Amen. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so part of the transformation process is going to be you and i changing or allowing what we currently believe amen and think and live in and build our lives upon those things 
We've got to be open to changing them. Is anybody here? Uh, what does it mean to be transformed? Well, I mean, I, I, there's several different definitions you can find on your own. But I, I had one here this morning. It says a change of your nature. A change at the heart of who you are. L listen to these words. A change in your nature. A change at the heart of who you are. Amen. So it says, again, Romans 12, 2, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Or we could say, but or be changed in your very nature. Change, be transformed, or be changed at the heart of who you are. Amen. Somebody said, yeah, but God loves me just the way that I am. Well, that is true, but that doesn't mean that God wants you to stay the way that you are. Well, God loves me just the way I am. I can continue to do what I'm doing. Well, again, it's never an issue of God's love. It's an issue of, you know, we have this opportunity. God loves you whether you change or not. His love never changes. Amen. Glory to God. But don't you want to just give God a little something more on what he's given you? what we call return on investment. Amen. How many in here you give one of your children or your children each $100,000? And you say, hey, I want you to do something with this. What if you, you know, you come back? I think there's a story in the Bible about this. You know, you come back, one guy took it and multiplied it multiple times, times 10, I think. And the other one did times five or whatever, five, two, and one, I don't remember, five, three, and one, whatever the numbers were. But then there was one that didn't do anything with it. And he came back and said, well, he, the master came back and said, you didn't do anything with what I gave you. He said, well, I didn't, I didn't want to lose what you gave me, so I buried it. Well, how I many know the, the, the master said, you, you've, this is terrible what you've done. I gave that to you so you could actually do something with it. But that's what God gives us. He wants us to do something with what he's given us. Is anybody here? Amen. That, he wants a return on all of the things that he's given us. Amen. All right, so a transformation is a change of our nature or a change at the heart of who we are. Now, a transformation is really simple. A transformed person, what does it look like to be transformed? Some of you have heard this, but you're going to hear it again. What does it look like to be transformed? What is it? How do I know that I'm being transformed? Well, it's very simple. A tran when we're talking about Christianity, a transformed Christian is someone that lives and acts and thinks like God would in any given circumstance. Are you here? So, so if I'm transformed in the area of, say, healing, everybody say healing. Everybody say healing. If I'm transformed in an area such as healing, according to what it says in the Bible about healing, a transformed person is a person that when they are put into a situation where they have to deal with a sickness or a disease of some kind, a transformed person, fully transformed person, would handle that situation the same way that God would handle the situation. Somebody said, we can, we can live on that kind of a level? Yes. It's, it's called Christianity. It's called Christianity. Jesus you have the nature of God on the inside of you. Is anybody here? You have the nature of God on the inside of you, which means you should absolutely be able to live and handle yourself just like God would in different situations. Amen. Anybody ever read stories about Jesus? You know, he's on the, the storm in the boat asleep. They wake him up. What does he do? He commands the storm to stop. Anybody ever heard that before? So then a transformed person in areas of authority would, would go to a situation that required authority and they would act on that situation just like Jesus did in the storm. That's what a fully transformed person. Now, let's, let's connect the dots here. It does not yet appear what we shall be. 
it does not yet appear what we shall be. But as we commit to the process of growth and transformation, we can become a lot more than what we are currently. Can I get a witness in here? Is anybody interested in that? When it comes down to it, you know, here's, here's my bottom line. I don't want, I've never been interested in Christianity as a, a form of religion. I want results. Does anybody want actual results from their faith? Do you, do you want to know that when you pray, you'll get answers to every prayer? Do you want to know that when you lay hands on someone that's sick, according to the word of God, that they'll recover? Don't you want to know that? Don't you want to know what Laura was up here talking about, about sowing and reaping? Don't you want that to work in your life? Don't you want to know that you have angels surrounding you every day when you're going about your, your business? Don't you want to know that the, the, you're led by the Holy Spirit and you're going to be in the right place at the right time every time? Hello? Don't, don't you want to know at the end, you know, walk in a fuller uh, level of what it is that you're actually called to be? Well, the, the only pathway to that is the road of transformation. Amen. Put it back up there. Romans chapter 12. God is not going to just change you. Is anybody here? Hello? God's not going to just change you. He's not going to just change you. You're going to have to actually get on the same road that everybody has to get on in order to change. Amen. I feel that this message is going over not as good as I expected it to. You know, actually, funny story, uh, a, a guy that used to, years ago, uh, be a part of the ministry here, I, I mentioned something about change, and he came up to me after, he said, you might want to be careful talking about change. Not a lot of people want to do that. And I thought, huh, that's a pretty interesting thought, isn't it? Because uh, really, the biggest hindrance of God flowing in our lives is not God or the devil, it's you and me. We're the controllers of how much of God operate in our lives. Is anybody here? So let me tell you this, and you're going to be held accountable for this. You can be changed. You can change into anything that the Bible says you can have. Is anybody here? You can walk in as much healing as you want to walk in. You can walk in as much of the blessing of God as you want to walk in. You can walk in as much of the favor of God as you want to walk in. You can walk in as much of the protection of God as you want to walk in. You can be led by the Holy Spirit as much as you want to be led by the Holy Spirit. You can walk in the power of God as much as you want to walk in the power of God. But guess who is the determining factor as for all those areas? You are. You are the determining factor. Hello? You, you and I are the... I know this is really encouraging, isn't it? Isn't this encouraging, all this personal responsibility? It's just so thrilling. I can tell by some of your faces, man. It's just, oh, this is great, Pastor Darren. Yeah. You, but for, for, for the responsible person, this message is liberating. Why? Because it's you get out of something exactly what you put into it. Let me say it again. You and I, myself included, you and I can walk in as much healing as we want to walk in listen to me i'm talking about healing in god let me give you some other basics you and i can walk in as much peace and joy as we want to who's the determining factor in the level of your peace and joy well, let me tell you who it's not it's not your spouse it's not your boss it's not your siblings. That you are the determining factor. How much peace and joy you walk in in your life. Is anybody here? Now, somebody say blessing. The blessing of God is upon you. The blessing of God is upon you. Okay? How much of that blessing that you want to walk in is determined by you? Well, 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 how? How so? 
Well, I've told the story probably a dozen times. The, actually, the gentleman was here. I don't think he told that specific story, but Bob Harrison. Uh, he said he went from, uh, uh, long story short, he went through this process of transformation and change. He said he was struggling financially, could, was barely getting along, didn't have enough money to keep up with whatever bills and debt he had created, which wasn't much, he said. He said he lost $25 one time in some transaction. He said he cried for two or three days trying to figure out how he was going to get that money back. Now, this was in the 1970s. I guess $25 was more money then, maybe. Anyway, but he said this. He said all of a sudden, now hear the, hear the story, and then I'm going to tell you one about healing. Hear the story. He said he grew up with a mindset that money was bad. I mean, uh, how many believe money is bad? Let me see your hand. There's always, a, there's always a couple hands that go up. Well, money's not good or bad. Money's whatever the person that has it is, right? So if a bad person has money, then they can do bad things. If a good person has money, they can do good things. Money's, it's bad. It's not bad or good. It's whatever the person that has it is, okay? So he said he was raised his whole life to, re- to think money is evil. If you have too much money, you're evil. You can't be godly and have too much money. So he had all these ideas, right? So he said he decided that he was going to find out what God's word said about that particular subject. Amen. So he said he spent 90 days. Everybody say 90 days. And he said he, he found, he got his Bible, he got books, he got tapes back in the cassette tape days. He said he put a tape player in every room in his house, in his car, in his office. Everywhere he was, he had found anointed teaching and preaching on the subject of uh, finances in the, according to the word of God. He said he took 90 days. Everybody say transformation. Put the verse back up there so you don't think I'm making this up. Romans 12, 2. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Amplified says by changing the ideals and mindsets that you already have. You've got to get God's ways of thinking and being and doing in you. And then you drive those other things out. So this guy said, Bob Harrison, 90 days. Everybody say 90 days. 90 days, night and day. He pulled the Psalms 1. Meditate on the word day and night. Meditate on the word day and night. He did this for 90 days. You know what he said happened at the end of 90 days? He said he was forever changed in the area of finances. He, he did it in 90 days. Now, everything didn't change in his life. Somebody needs to get a hold of this. Everything didn't change in his life in 90 days. But, but what changed in 90 days was in here. I'm, I could run around this building right now saying this. As soon as you change in here, everything out here will change. Because <laughs> nothing changes out here until something changes in here. This, my friends, is how God operates. Beloved. Third John 2, I wish above all things that you prosper and enjoy health even as or in direct proportion to your soul prospering. Which means this, if you change, is anybody here? If you change the inner picture and belief system, the outer will change. L- let me tell you, I will give you a money back guarantee on this principle because it is the way that everything works my dad used to tell me when i was a kid darren you got the same 24 hours that that billion billionaire businessman has he has the same 24 hours a day that you have amen and here's what i realized in 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 life thinking about that comment the reason that that individual is operating at that level is because they know something that I don't know. Is anybody here? That people, 
that operate in areas usually know things that you and I don't know. Is anybody here? So Bob Harrison, to finish the story, 90 days. He forever changed not the outside. He changed the inside. Is anybody here? He changed. I, 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 I've spoken to this man a few times. He's been here to speak. I had lunch with him. He is extremely prosperous. How did he do it? Back in that 90-day period when he changed. See, you and I not only determine the level of transformation that we have, we actually determine how long it takes to change. We were talking the other day about this concept that the world has gotten a hold of. It's called immersion. Everybody say immersion. What is an immersion? What is immersion? It's a concentrated time to produce change. Some people will come to church for 50 years straight and will never change. Don't ask me why. I don't know why. I don't know how that is. But again, that's not God's fault. That's the individual's. And they can say that those religious lines, everything that happens in my life is God's will, that would be the biggest lie that they had ever told in their life if they were to say that. Because if you're sitting here every week, sometimes some of us two and three times a week, and we're hearing the word of God, what's right here in this thing, right here this morning, I'm sharing two scriptures that will absolutely revolutionize every single person's life in this room. And it will not be my responsibility to make sure that everyone in this room does this. Now, I can help. I can be a pastor. I can come alongside you. I can pray for you. I can meet with you. We can have lunch. We can, we can hang out at your house if you'd like and go over some things. I can hold you accountable if you'd like. But I can't change you. I can't change you. Hello? But, but the principle is if you take the responsibility, you can determine. So 90 days, everybody say 90 days. Now that man changed his life in 90 days. Here's another example. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get down around third base here. Okay. Um, the man who we talk so much about, Kenneth E. Hagan, he, in the area of healing, he was diagnosed well, he was born way premature is actually his grandma thought he died he was could fit in her hand uh, anyway long story short you have to listen to his testimony but he kind of there was some life about him anyway they nursed him back to health anyway he was had a deformed heart and he had an incurable blood disease and by the time he was a teenager he was completely paralyzed bed bedridden paralyzed as a teenager and he said this he said he sat there now, he, his time went more than 90 days because he was bedridden and he could only do so much in the day. But he said he meditated in God's word on the subject of healing. Everybody say healing. How many, how many of us could use more of that? We, we could use physical health and healing. We could use mental health and healing. Amen. Every one of us can, in, can enjoy more health. It's, we live in a fallen world. That's sickness filled we need to build our faith in this area of healing right so well pastor darren isn't it god's will if someone gets healed or not no no god's already given us his will and his word and he said by the stripes of jesus we're healed he, actually jesus redeemed us from the curse of sickness right this is all in the bible okay so kenneth hagan sitting on this bed sick for 15, 16, 17 months, whatever it was, meditating on God's word. So in that time period, he got a hold of something. I shared on it recently, last week or two, Mark eleven twenty four, about faith. And he said he realized that when he prayed, he had to believe that he received his healing. Hello? And then he would be, then the healing would come and manifest. But the point is, he meditated on those verses of healing for months and months and months it goes back to i'm quoting it again somebody needs to write it down psalms chapter one amen there's actually several of these verses psalms one 
1 through 3. If you want to read something this week, if you, if you want to follow up with this and you want to produce change in, in your lives, which all of us should want to do, right? Amen. Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Number 2, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Write it down. Another one, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. Those are the three go-to verses that I go to for change. How many want to be a better husband or wife? Amen. According to God. According to God's word. Because... Again, put up my verse again in the King James. It says, do not, or be, do not be conformed to this world. I mean, the world, their ideas are getting crazier and crazier with each passing day. I, I've actually, like I told you recently, in the last five years, one of the best things decisions I made in the last probably t- 10 years was to turn the, the, the news television off. I, I mean, I'm a happier person. Why? That stuff hasn't changed. And the Lord spoke to me and said, that hasn't changed in 6,000 years. It's always somebody going for something, you know. Not, I'm, not, I'm not saying I don't love my country and I don't want good for my country. I do. I do. Obviously, we pray for those things, right? But they're not going to solve it for me. I've actually got a higher mission to operate in to establish God's kingdom. Amen. Guess what? We don't have to vote for a president in that one. We already got a leader. Hello? Is anybody here? He, he, you can't vote him out. <laughs> he, he, he's, the, he's the one. He's the one, okay? I'd rather establish his kingdom than be floundering around with this one that's been bouncing around for thousands of years. Not just an American. I'm talking about the world. <laughs> you know? Hello? No, the world's got their way of doing things. And God's got his way of doing things. And, and his ways are better. Amen. So the world has ideas on marriage. The world has ideas on parenting. Folks, let, let, me, let me just, I'm going to make this really painless for you. Come on up, Travis. This, this, is just, this, it, this just doesn't get any easier than this. Why don't you do this? Let's be, let's be uh, doers of God's word right now. If you have something to write on there, your little phone, X off of Facebook right now or whatever you're on, and just go to your notes thing here or your little notepad. I want you to write down, just, just to give you something to do, take, to take with you. I want you to write down two or three areas that you want to see change happen in your life. Write down two or three areas that you want to see change. You want to be transformed in these areas. You know, there's always the big five. I'm not going to give you my answers, but it, it, we all deal with those five or six top areas. What are they? Health, finances, marriage, work, and probably parenting. Those are like the five areas, right? That all of us have to deal with probably most, if not all of us have to deal with on an ongoing basis, right? What are they again? Health, finances, uh, marriage, children, and your, your work, your, your job, whatever you do for, you know, in those areas, five things. So if, if you and I could just, just take this simple message. I've done this. I've done this. I've watched others do it. What I'm telling you today, it works. I probably spent thousands of dollars at conferences to hear somebody say what I'm telling you this morning. What is it? You can change. You can be transformed. How do you do it? By renewing your mind. You can change quickly if you're committed to a process of doing that. Is anybody here? I I remember when Laura and I were first starting out, we were just married. I had started getting a hold of the message of uh, uh, biblical finances. Never heard it preached in my life. All of a sudden, I was in a church where the Lord focused uh, on this message about finances. And I sat there for worked there for three years and for those three years God poured that message into me a healthy message of biblical prosperity I'm not talking about gimmicks and you know whatever buying dirt from the wailing wall of Jerusalem whatever if that's your thing go with it release your faith maybe it'll work for you that's not my thing I build my life on principles in God's word amen so I started getting a hold of that message for three years I took it upon myself. Now, I'm just a Christian at this point. I'm not, I'm not talking about super pastor. I'm just a Christian. 
I'm taking these principles and I'm applying them to my life. So I got a hold of a, a thing. Matter of fact, I just gave it to Tyson a couple of weeks ago. A teaching about how to break through the poverty stuff into a, a mindset of a blessing according to God's word. So I took that, listened to it over and over and over again. I, I got a little book on uh, scriptures about prosperity from the Bible. I tore that book apart. It, it literally fell into parts. That's how much I read it. I marked it. I highlighted it. I, I, I just what did I do? What was I doing? I was being transformed by the renewing of my mind. So now, I don't think... Now, I still got room to grow. Don't get me wrong. I don't think in terms of poverty anymore. I don't think in terms of there's not enough for me. No, my mind has been renewed and I've actually had a few encounters with the Lord about the subject of prosperity. And, and the Lord actually ministered to me and said, I am abundance. I, I am abundance. And, and which means to say, I want my kids to be blessed. Not, not just a little bit blessed, a lot of bit blessed. You're not an evil person if you have blessing in your life. Why? Because blessing is not, money is not good or bad. It's whatever the person that has it is. So if God, if God puts an enormous amount of prosperity in your life, what are you going to do with it? You're going to do good with it. Is anybody here? Same with some of you. If God puts prosperity in your hand, you're going to do good with it. Right? So then it's not good or bad. Folks, it's the same with every area. It's the same with every area. So I've done a little bit, not as much in the area of healing, but I've done enough. I've done enough. Man, just this past week, I told Laura, I woke up in the middle of the night, had some symptom come on me. And I, I, I got up out of bed and I just said, uh, this, 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 no, 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 this ain't right. So within probably 30 minutes of that, me waking up, I just laid hands on myself and I just said in the name of Jesus I command every one of these lying symptoms to leave my body guess what I woke up in the morning totally fine and guess what they didn't come back why how do you do that how do you operate in that you've got to be transformed you're not going to just do it you're not going to just do it to do it you don't know it's got to get in you this is how anybody in this room can change in any area of your life. Did, did anybody write down two or three areas that you'd like to change in? How many, how many did? Let me see your hand. Okay. So then what do you do? What do you do? Well, it's real simple. You pick one. Maybe you scout. You, you, maybe you build a little plan where you just do some of each of those three areas or whatever. A little bit each day. What do you mean? What do you do? You listen. My number one way that I did it was listening to anointed preaching in that area. I'm not talking about woe is me preaching. I'm talking about anointed faith ministering. Actually, people that have a spirit of faith. Because you can listen. Let me tell you right now. Everybody in this room can go on YouTube today. You can find sermons that talk about that it's God's will for you to be sick. You can find them. And they will convince you from Scripture that it's God's will or you never you know some of this garbage you never know what God's gonna do his mysteries to perform and shut up shut up that is religious garbage I know what God's gonna do because he told me what he's gonna do in his word and I see where Jesus laid hands on the, the sick and it says he healed every one of them and if Hebrews 11 8, 13 8 is true Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever if he healed then He'll heal now. Well, healing and miracles has been done away with. What do they call that? What's that word? I forgot. Uh huh. Cessationalism, or what's it called? Cessation. Another load of garbage. You, you can go dump that out of the city dump here in Live Oak. It's garbage. It's a lie. It's against scripture. And anybody that preaches it is going to be held accountable. Why? Because it says in the New Testament that he bore my sicknesses and pain. Amen. And, and if God, if Jesus bore it, why would God put it on me? God is 
not a schizophrenic. He doesn't change in, in every moment and have anxiety attacks and say, I changed my mind. I don't want to do this anymore. No, if he said it, it's that way. Amen. So you can be changed. Hello? You can be changed. Bow your heads this morning. All right. Oh, look at this. I'm doing good. Let me start my second term. Totally kidding. Bow your heads this morning. Think about those areas. I want you to think about that verse. It does not yet appear what you shall be. I want you to do what, what, what I've done, others have done. It's in the Bible. I want you to see yourself operating in those levels. See yourself operating in a great... My God, we've been preaching it for years. That God wants to supernaturally prosper you. Amen. And there's a tremendous work to do. And now there's grace operating right now. There's grace operating right now for you to step into that area more than there ever has been. There's a supernatural grace for you to step in and take what belongs to you right now. There's actually, the Lord's been dealing with me about it. There's a quicker, this is a quicker season where transformation can happen. Amen. Where it would have taken some people 10, 20, 30 years to change in some areas and actually produce results. We're not living in that day right now. There's actually a, 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 an acceleration that's been happening and starting. Now there's more grace. I'm telling you guys, listen to me right now. I'm, we're going to be having testimonies in this place where people are going to come up and they're going to say, I heard this, I stepped out on something, and literally in a week, this, this supernatural thing happened. Folks, I'm telling you, mark it down. Be open to transformation. Be open to walking in things that you are not currently walking in. If your vision of your life is that you are the same until the day that you die or leave this earth, that's not a godly vision. Because God's children, God expects you and I to change and to evolve and to grow. It's actually His will that you and I walk in things greater, amen, than we are currently in our future. Come on. So, I see some of you, you, you minister into the sick and you're operating in a, in, a, in a tangible anointing of healing. That will grow in your life. Let me sit. Oh, let me, oh, there it is. There it is. Let me give it to you this way. What you give yourself to is the areas that you will grow in. What you give yourself to. Paul told Timothy, the prophecies that were made about you or given to you, give yourself wholly to them so that your profiting may appear to all. What does that mean? What is the principle? What? You give when you give yourself holy, not H O L Y, you give yourself holy or completely to something, your profit will appear to others. Meaning you will excel in that area. Just make a decision right now. Don't put it off for another minute. Make a decision that you will grow. I will help you. I will sit down with you. I will fill my calendar with days and times to meet with you, to help you, to bring these things to pass. Now, I won't do it for you, and Laura will do the same. Others in this church will help you. Don't leave here and, 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 and miss the point of what God's saying. There is no better time than to, to go into a new year knowing that you have a plan from the Lord to see, my God, can I prophesy over somebody today? Can I prophesy over you today? My God, let's declare that in the first few months of the new year, amen, that we're going to see rapid transformation. I'm declaring that right now as a statement of fact and faith. Amen. That in the first uh, uh, quarter, we'll even stretch, stretch it out to the half of the year. We'll say in the first half of the year, there will be tremendous transformation and growth in this place in the name of Jesus. The devil can't stop it. Amen. And God's for it. So we're going to do it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everybody stand up on your feet this morning. Glory to God. Come on. Say the word today. Say it out loud. Say it doesn't yet appear what I shall be. Oh, glory to God. If it's just me getting it, I'm going to get it.
it. Glory to God. It does not yet appear what I shall be. Glory to God. Oh, come on. Somebody say I. Say this with me. Say I'm being transformed as I renew my mind. Now say this with me. Say there is great grace to help in this area. Amen. So right now, just receive that grace right now. Just receive it. Just receive it. I have grace for change. I'm receiving. I'm receiving it right now. Glory to God. I'm receiving it right now for myself. Lord, I just receive grace right now for supernatural transformation. Supernatural change. Glory to God. I receive it, Lord. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I receive it. Hallelujah. Great grace for tra for transformation and change. Hallelujah. Now just thank God for it. Amen. Great grace. Come on, pick your area. Somebody said, oh, I don't know if I'm, I can do it. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Man, just be quiet and start acting like a winner. You're a champion. You can make it. You can do it. You can be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Turn to two or three people. Tell them I'm a winner. I'm a champion. I'm not a loser. I'm a winner.